In the late 1950s, inside a locked garage at International Harvester's East Moline, Illinois facility, a small group of engineers began working on something that would fundamentally transform the grain harvesting business. The windows were frosted. Only a handful of people had keys. Management in Chicago may not have even known what was happening. And just one mile down the road sat John Deere's combine plant, where employees from both companies regularly crossed paths at local restaurants and bars. What these international engineers were developing had to remain absolutely secret, because if it worked, it would render every conventional combine on the market obsolete. For decades, the combine harvester had operated on essentially the same principle. Cut material entered the machine, passed through a threshing cylinder that beat the grain loose from the heads, and then traveled across a series of oscillating straw walkers. These walkers relied primarily on gravity to shake the remaining grain free from the straw before it exited the rear of the machine. The system worked, but it had serious limitations. Straw walkers depended on grain falling through gaps in the walking mechanism. In heavy crop conditions, the tangled mat of material prevented adequate separation. Conventional threshing cylinders struck each kernel only once or twice with rasp bars, which could damage grain and still leave a significant percentage unthreshed. The numbers told the story. A conventional cylinder might separate 85 to 95 percent of the grain on the first pass. The remaining material, often two to three tons per hour of grain mixed with similar amounts of straw and chaff, had to work its way through the walker system. On slopes, performance degraded further. Operators constantly balanced walker speed against the risk of plugging the entire machine. Engineers across the industry knew there had to be a better way. International Harvester's laboratory research in the late 1950s demonstrated that an open concave and cylinder arrangement proved far more efficient at separating grain than straw walkers ever could. The question was how to build a practical machine around that principle. Engineer Alof Carlson and colleague Mel van Buskirk began exploring rotary concepts at the East Moline facility. Their work was deliberately kept off the official books. The locked garage with frosted windows became their laboratory. The geographical problem was significant. John Deere's combine manufacturing operation sat roughly a mile from International Harvester's facility. Workers from both companies lived in the same neighborhoods, ate at the same establishments, and their families attended the same schools and churches. Any leak could give competitors years of advance warning. By 1969, when test engineer Dave Gustafson joined the project, approximately a dozen people had access to the garage. Early prototypes were retrofitted into existing 15-series combine chassis. The team employed high-speed filming at 400 frames per second to analyze exactly how grain moved through the rotor and concave system. In July 1970, prototype CX-18A underwent field testing near Aberdeen, South Dakota. The results were promising, but challenges remained. Tough straw conditions caused blockages. Multiple setbacks pushed back potential release dates. The project that engineers initially estimated would take years ended up requiring decades of development. Yet the team persevered. When they witnessed their experimental machines consistently outperforming conventional combines in actual field conditions, they knew they had something revolutionary. The fundamental innovation was elegant in its simplicity. Instead of a transverse cylinder followed by straw walkers, the axial flow design used a single longitudinal rotor that performed both threshing and separation in one continuous operation. Crop material entered the front of the rotor housing and spiraled around the rotor multiple times as it traveled toward the rear of the machine. This extended contact meant each kernel received numerous gentle touches rather than one or two violent impacts. Centrifugal force, not just gravity, drove grain through the concave grates. The advantages were substantial, Multiple contact points meant gentler handling and better grain quality. The continuous rotary action provided higher capacity without making the machine impossibly large. Delicate crops like barley and peas could be harvested with less damage. The simpler design had fewer moving parts than conventional walker systems. According to New Holland's own claims about rotary technology, crop passage time dropped from approximately nine seconds in conventional machines to roughly three seconds in rotary designs. The efficiency gains were undeniable. 
The National Harvester was not alone in pursuing rotary technology. Sperry New Holland introduced its TR-70 twin rotor combine in 1975, beating Harvester to market by two years. The machine used two 17-inch diameter rotors mounted axially, producing between 145 and 168 horsepower with a 190 bushel grain tank. New Holland's development had begun around 1968, adapting concepts from the Clay's 985 straw walker machine. Their twin rotor design was particularly suited for hilly terrain and offered a more compact profile than conventional machines. John Deere was also closely monitoring developments. Company representatives reportedly photographed international combine shipments on rail cars passing through the area. When the axial flow finally launched in 1977, Deere allegedly purchased an early 1460 model from a Minnesota farmer, trading a new Deere combine plus cash to get their hands on the revolutionary machine for testing. Dr. Glenn Cayley led Deere's rotary development efforts. By some accounts, John Deere spent more on rotary combine research during the 1970s than International Harvester invested in its entire axial flow program, with estimates suggesting Deere's investment exceeded $120 million. The company had actually attempted rotary designs earlier, with experimental models with designations starting with XCC between 1957 and 1962, but abandoned them due to plugging and grain loss problems. In the fall of 1977, International Harvester introduced the first 300 axial flow combines at the Farm Progress Show. Over a million man-hours had gone into the project. Different configurations had been tested, various concepts had been explored. When the firm produced what they called the final product, they had determined that a single longitudinally mounted rotor offered the most promise. Two models debuted that year. The Model 1440 delivered 135 horsepower from a 436 cubic inch engine, featured a 24 inch diameter rotor and carried a 145 bushel grain tank with 4,750 square inches of sieve cleaning area. The Model 1460 stepped up to 170 horsepower from the same displacement engine, retained the 24-inch rotor, but offered greater capacity with a 180 bushel grain tank and identical sieve area. Both machines featured manual hydraulics, an open center hydraulic system with gear pump, and manual or automatic header height control options. They rolled off the assembly line in East Moline, the same facility where secret development had begun nearly two decades earlier. The design philosophy centered on five core principles that would guide axial flow development for decades to come. Simplicity, grain quality, grain savings, crop adaptability, and matched capacity. Marketing an unconventional design proved difficult. Early prototypes had actually discharged straw from the side of the machine. Engineers struggled to reconfigure the discharge to exit from the rear in a more conventional manner, but eventually succeeded. The first pre-production units went to a small group of producers willing to take a chance on unproven technology. As Jerry Salzman of Case International later recalled, farmers took a chance with the company on those early machines. Expansion came quickly. Between 1978 and 1979, the larger Model 1480 joined the lineup, featuring 190 horsepower from a 436 cubic inch engine, a 30 inch rotor, and a 208 bushel grain tank. Rice special versions of the 1460 and 1480 appeared, equipped with specialized rice rotors, appropriate tires, long unloading augers, raised grain tank leveling augers, and the option for tracks instead of tires. The 1480 Rice Special received a larger 466 cubic inch engine. By 1980, the product line expanded further. The Model 1482 pull-type combine required a 130 horsepower or larger tractor and featured a 30 inch rotor with a 245 bushel grain tank. Its threshing and cleaning systems were based on the 1480 self-propelled machine. The 1470 Hillside Combine addressed terrain challenges with a 210 horsepower DT-466 engine 
hydrostatic four-wheel drive, and the ability to remain level on slopes up to 48% with four-way leveling capability. In 1981, the smaller 1420 joined the family, replacing the popular 715 conventional combine. It delivered 112 horsepower, featured a 20-inch rotor and 125 bushel grain tank. The 1420 became International Harvester's first combine with electric over hydraulic controls, replacing the levers, knobs, cables and mechanical linkages of previous designs. The agricultural industry underwent massive consolidation during the 1980s farm crisis. In 1985, Tenneco's J.I. Case acquired International Harvester's agricultural division, forming Case International and creating the second largest farm equipment manufacturer globally. The axial flow technology transferred seamlessly to the new organization. The 1600 series arrived in 1986 with substantial improvements, including 70% capacity increases on mid-range models and a revolutionary cross-flow cleaning fan that debuted with the second-generation 1600 series in 1993. In 1999, Case merged with New Holland under Fiat ownership to create CNH Global, bringing together two pioneering rotary combine manufacturers under one corporate umbrella. By 2003, the AFX represented a new generation of axial flow technology. Built at a new facility in Grand Island, Nebraska, the 8010 delivered 375 horsepower from a 10.3-liter engine, carried a 330-bushel grain tank, and featured a massive 30-inch diameter rotor measuring 104 inches long. Production officially moved from East Moline to Grand Island in 2005, closing the chapter on the original axial flow birthplace. Through 2013, Case IH had produced over 160,000 axial flow combines. That figure exceeded the combined production of all other major rotary combine manufacturers. The single rotor design that began in a locked garage with frosted windows had become the dominant force in rotary harvesting. The technology continued advancing. Tier 4 emissions compliance brought selective catalytic reduction systems with approximately 10% fuel efficiency improvements. Grain tank capacities reached 350 bushels, unloading rates climbed to 4.5 bushels per second, Advanced farming systems integrated GPS guidance, yield monitoring, and automated machine adjustments. What Elof Carlson, Mel Van Buskirk, Dave Gustafsson, and their colleagues developed in secrecy during the 1960s fundamentally transformed how the world harvests grain. The conventional straw walker, dominant for generations, now occupies a shrinking niche. Rotary combines, led by the axial flow design, handle the vast majority of grain harvested on large-scale operations worldwide. International Harvester no longer exists as an independent company. But its revolutionary contribution to agricultural mechanization lives on in every axial flow combine working fields today, more than four decades after those first red machines rolled out of East Moline.